Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here on this edition of the REI Hacker Podcast. Really excited for my next guest. His name is Baudry Maliner. He is based out of the Portland, Oregon area. He's the co-founder and vice president of Avestor. It's a technology platform that's focused on end-to-end -end solutions for real estate fund managers to build customizable private funds for syndicating real estate deals. baudry has got an extensive uh, investment experience background uh, spanning from a variety of asset classes, including real estate, stocks, bonds, crypto, commodities, options, you name it. He's done it. He also does angel investing and has co-founded uh, two startups, um, has extensive management experience, um, uh, font, sp spending uh, multiple different companies, including Fortune 500 companies, and he has an MBA in marketing and finance and a master's in computer science. So welcome, sir. Thank you so much for bringing this. Thank you, Benson. It's a pleasure to audience. be on your podcast. I appreciate um, you having, having me over. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting story how I found you uh, because um, I am getting into the the syndication world and uh, I was at a, a real estate conference recently in Houston. Um, do you know Tim Mai by chance? I do. I, I actually spoke at his conference. So <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so not Tim... this conference, but I, he had a conference for fund managers. Uh, yeah. I know Tim and I spoke at his conference, but you were probably at the capital raising conference which uh, we, we we had our own Navester Summit at the time. So, but uh, gotcha. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I've known Tim for many years. We're both in the family mastermind, which actually you should consider um, looking into. It's a great group of uh, real estate entrepreneurs, uh, mentors, coaches, a lot of uh, important people that you would probably know of are part of this group. Uh, nice. You should, should consider looking into it. Uh, but Tim uh, and I met there and, I was at his conference to just really start to understand the syndication world. I've always thought about multifamily properties as a potential place for me to level up to after doing so many, you know, wholesale and fix and flip and, and rental properties. And, you know, I look at it as, you know, you could spend three or four hours doing a wholesale deal, or you can spend three or four hours fundraising for a large multi-million dollar multifamily project. And the returns are way different. Right. So this is this is how I'm viewing it and where I'm going in my career. And so uh went there and really started things started to become more, way more in focus when it came to the multifamily world and what was possible. And for me, it just seems so far out of reach. Um, mm -hmm. just because it, it seems so big and there's so many problems that have to be solved to really start getting into the multifamily world. And you know, the easiest answer is to come in as a limited partner. Right, and just put some money into a project. But then you think about, well, finding your own deals and being a general partner. And that's when it really starts to get complex is with the compliance and you know how to structure the deal properly, how to find the deals, how to raise money. And all that is stuff that I'm learning right now, which is how I found you. Very interesting. And just to build on what you said, I don't think there is one right answer for everybody. Uh, I really believe... It's all about portfolio construction and risk uh, uh, allocations, right? I mean, you create different buckets um, and uh, based on your risk level, and then you put a certain amount of uh, percentage of your net worth in that risk bucket. Absolutely nothing wrong with, I've done a single family. I don't do fix and flips. I just believe in long-term hold. Uh, I, you know, I typically invest only in um, houses which are within 10 minutes driving or 15 minutes driving distance from my house. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. I know people like to invest across the country, but whenever I ventured outside my immediate um, uh, comfort zone, it n never really panned out well. I mean, maybe I didn't execute well. It's best to stay in the area you're in. But going back to what you said, uh, yes, multifamily can be very daunting. And I completely agree with you that you probably should start as an LP because then you'll understand what the challenges are. Uh, and um, very often the sponsors are willing to work with you uh, and to explain what's going on, uh, understand it, uh, understand the nuances before you start getting into uh, being your own GP for a multifamily. So go on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. And, you know, I've I've done, you know, some education and some research and, you know, whenever you're going into something new, there's always blind spots. Like you, you don't know what you don't know. And mm -hmm. so there's, there can be some complexities there that you miss out on that could end up making you lose a lot of money or even worse, causing you to lose money for your limited partners. Exactly. Which, exactly. You know, if you, if you get, you know, them to lose money, then, you know, you'll, you'll, 
it's a small world, right? Like you don't want that reputation of losing money for your investors. So doing it the right way is really what I, I think uh, people should focus on. Um, and that's why one of the things I liked about Avestor. So Avestor is a really cool platform. And I've been researching a bunch of other platforms that are out there, Groundwork and Juniper, um, Cashflow Portal. There's a handful of, of companies out there that have um, maybe similar offerings as as Avestor. Um, and you, you know, I would to, uh, to almost uh, pause has... you for a second there. Sure. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, it's okay. Uh, uh, I think it's very, very important because you had uh, put us in a bunch of uh, platform categories. Uh, I, let me step back a little bit and kind of introduce sure. Avestor. Uh, they're all great platforms, but comparing Avestor to a technology portal is like comparing a steering wheel to an automobile. I mean, so there is a huge distinction. We can have academic discussions on my steering wheel is better than yours, it's thicker than yours, it's fatter than yours. I don't know how you compare steering wheels. Yeah. But the question I ask for you is, do you want an automobile or do you want a steering wheel? And I'll, let me build on that and tell you why I'm saying that. We are not just a technology portal. We have a fantastic technology team. All our co-founders come from technology backgrounds. We have built portal uh, platforms which extend to millions of users. But really, our claim to fame is um, uh, um, our claim to fame is basically the fact that we become true business partners to somebody like you, and we help you with all aspects of launching your fund the legal, the compliance, the accounting, we don't refer you to partners. It's all integrated and we give you an integrated solution for launching your fund and for capital raising. So the, the uh, it's a done for you solution as opposed to a done with you or here is a referral, talk to this attorney, talk to this accountant. That's the big distinction. I can go into more detail, but I wanted to kind of set the stage when because you mentioned a bunch of portals, they're all great people, I know many of them great portals, but we are not just a portal. A portal is a small piece of what we offer. Yeah. Thank you for that. I, I was, um, and that's one of the, the distinctions I wanted to point out is as I was doing my research, I found these other portals that were out there that I had heard of. And what I liked about yours was, was the, the expert guidance and the community that you can get as part of the Avestor network and offering. So um, I agree with you. There, there's way more to it at least from my, you know, early perspective on the platform. And and this is what, you know, I started that with talking about blind spots, right? Mm -hmm. Where all the things that I you just don't know. And, you know, with another platform, if you know it all, you go in there and you, you know exactly which buttons to push, you know how to set it up properly. But somebody who's starting out doesn't know how to structure the deal the, the right way or whether they're going to do a 506B or a C or, you know, what are the proper ways to fundraise and stay compliant? And so I feel like with a platform like yours, you're getting way more support in getting this off the ground than if you just went in and used a technology platform that has not, it doesn't have the support built into it. Yeah. And if what you need is just a technology portal and nothing else, uh, absolutely. You should go down that road. Um, uh, but I can tell you, so many fund managers have said, uh, my co-founder and I get on a call, even if it's a Saturday evening, uh, they have said, hey, you have saved me thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars attorney and accounting fees. I'm not saying we are uh, attorneys, but we can guide you in the right direction, and then you can get a final opinion as opposed to get educated by an attorney. Trust me, you don't want education from an attorney at $600 an hour. Um, mm -hmm. And so we have strategy calls. We help you uh, refine your fund strategy. And uh, we do a lot of the legwork before you go on an attorney. So then the uh, attorney is turning the crank, so to speak. And we, you still get a custom uh, PPM and you still work with a top-notch SAC attorney. But we answer a lot of your questions so that you're ready to turn the crank when you go. Yeah. And... Uh, and so that's uh, kind of what really distinguishes us. I mean, that's why I give the steering wheel versus automobile analogy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you might even liken it to like, you know, do you want, uh, you know, the, the the steering wheel for the car, or do you want an Uber driver, right? Who's who's going to drive you there, right? They've they've got with the car with the car, right? The, the Uber driver comes with the with car, the not car, just a driver. Yeah. So and they get you there, and you're sitting in the back, 
right? Just along for the ride and, you know, watching as they drive and, you know, looking out the window at, at the sites. I would take that analogy so far uh, because uh, we will help you drive. But at the end of the day, when you start a fund, it's very, very important that mm. uh, you are actively involved. You find the deals will guide you. But uh, the uh, Uber driving analogy is I'll just sit down and read my paper. You run the fund for me. It won't quite work. But at the same time, we do guide you in all aspects of it. Think of it as a guide who takes you on the journey as opposed to you sit back and let somebody else do the driving for you. Yeah. I mean, a slight uh, difference in uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, subtlety there. Or yeah. we could so. even take it a step further and it's like, they're just driving you to the next stop. Like you're not your final, final destination yet. They're just getting you to the next stop so you can do the next part of your journey, right? Which mm -hmm. is, is running the fund. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you don't mind, let me give some context on what we are trying to do and then we sure. can continue on this. So maybe I can tell you a little bit about why we started Avestor. So investing in alternative investments is a very complex effort for investors. So basically, uh, you, you have to read the 40, 50 page PPM. I don't know how much multifamily investing you have done. I know you have done more single family and fix and flips. And then sometimes you, by the time you go to a site, the deal is gone. So we really built our platform for solving investor problems. And then so many fund managers came and said, what you have built is phenomenal. Uh, uh, why, why are you not extending it to other funds? So we kind of pivoted a little bit and now we are offering this fund platform for all fund managers. So, you know, raising capital can be very, very complicated, right? I mean, you're creating a separate PPM uh, for each deal. A, a PPM for those of your listeners who don't know what it is, is a private placement memorandum. And then for each deal, you have to do something called a blue sky filing, which is you file with the first investor from each state. So what we have built is a something called a customizable fund. Now, other people are claiming they have customizable funds, but we have been doing it for four years. And we have built this technology from ground up as opposed to saying retrofitting it to existing technology. And a customizable fund, think of it as building an empty foundation. Let's take you as an example. You want to um, play with multifamily. Maybe you want to play with some other asset class. Maybe you're not giving up your single family and uh, uh, flips business completely. With a customizable fund, you build an empty foundation and then you can decide what rooms you want to populate with. With one fund, you can invest in multifamily, self-storage. Maybe you can do a fix and flip. You mentioned you may want to do a debt origination. You can do that in the same fund. That's the beauty of a customizable fund. So to recap, there are two main advantages for Avestor. We kind of really invented the concept of customizable funds and we popularized it. I mean, I mean, the term exists, but we built a platform to support it, to give you incredible flexibility in your capital raising efforts. And the second thing is we didn't provide just a technology portal, just to recap what I said. We help you with all aspects of accounting, legal, compliance. We have a mastermind where you can interact with other fund managers. And I can talk a little more about that. So the two main points is the customizable fund and the done for you solution, which encompasses all aspects you need for um, running your fund. So just wanted to set the context. Yeah, I appreciate that. So with the customizable fund, you can change, you don't have to be a PPM for each deal or you, that's what's different for each deal. The The fund is the kind of like the, the top of the hierarchy and then the PPM for each deal would be below it. Ah, good question. Let me clarify that. So the way we work with you, um, you said you may be considering Avestor. We would love to have you on board. Uh, the way we work with you is we set up a strategy call uh, after you sign our engagement letter. And then we ask you what asset classes you're likely to go after. Doesn't mean you have to identify everything. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want to give up your fix and flip business completely. Maybe you do a little bit of that. So we identify the generic risks associated with that asset class and develop this customized PPM, which covers the risks for those asset classes, doesn't talk about a specific deal yet. So for mm -hmm. each deal, we have something called a deal disclosure document, which is, um, um, you know, 10, 15 page, uh, pages, uh, 10, 12 pages, as opposed to a 50, 60 page PPM. And it's a template document. We'll help you fill that out. If you want, you can get, a, get it reviewed by the attorney. And each deal disclosure document outlines any additional risks associated with the deal. 
the specific splits. I mean, each deal might be a different split, right? So you mm -hmm. may offer a 80-20 split for one deal or a 70-30 split for another deal. And that's what actually talks about um, the deal itself. And then the investor signs the deal disclosure document when they're investing in the deal. And when they join the fund, they join the sign the general PPM. That's a long-winded answer to your question, but I want to distinguish between the general PPM and the deal disclosure document. So Got it. So the general PPM is, is if there was any sort of asset classes that were highly risk different, like if there was one uh -huh. that was really highly risk risky and there was another one that was low risk, you might create two separate PPMs for those. But if they're similar enough, then you would have one PPM and then you would have- No, uh, even if they're very PPM. different, we would create only one PPM, but we would clearly outline the, uh, hey, for this asset class, these are the risks. And for this asset class, these are the risks. And the, in a customizable fund, an investor can come in and pick and choose which deal they want and how much they want to invest. What we are really trying to do is bring the stock brokerage type of experience to alternative investing. So mm -hmm. you open when you open the fund, you put, let's say, $100,000. And then I, uh, just like you buy a stock, you when you open a stock account, you put some money in. If you're like most people, you don't know every single stock you're going to buy. You can say, I want to put $10,000 in this deal, $20,000 in this deal. And the beauty of it is um, we automatically generate a single K-1 regardless of how many deals you invest. So what our platform brings the, combines the best benefits of blind funds where investors don't have a choice and they're investing in every single deal with the benefits of a syndication. That's the beauty of a customizable fund. Mm. You get all the benefits of the blind fund because you get a single PPM, single K-1, and then you get all the benefits of individual syndications because investors choose which deal they want to invest, how much they want to invest, and they uh, all the 100% of the depreciation benefits will flow through on a pro rata basis. Got it. So is your platform looking to work with fund managers, but it's also bringing in investors from the different side and, and combining those two or introducing uh, them? Great question. Great question. The answer to that is a little complex. So there are three ways we bring investors to you. We are not a broker dealer. We don't go market your fund to individual investors, but we do have a fund marketplace. Investors do come in and can find your fund there. And if they like your thesis and they like your background, they'll contact you and there's no additional charge for that. It's all included. The other way we bring investors to you is we have created this. This, I think, is our real secret weapon, if you will, but not so secret since I'm talking about it. We have created this mastermind and this community of uh, capital raisers and sponsors. So there are sponsors who are doing their own deals, and then there are allocators who are maybe want to raise money for somebody else. Maybe they're not doing their own deals. We bring them together, we establish the connections. And so um, you as a sponsor can present to other allocators and they will bring their investors to you. Mm -hmm. Now, 100% full disclosure, other fund manager capital is more expensive than investors for obvious reasons. They'll take a portion of the promote, but the advantage is you're getting a million dollar check or a half a million dollar check from one fund manager as opposed to 50K checks. Yes, they take a portion of the promote, but then you're not communicating with as many investors. So as a sponsor, you can follow a dual pronged approach or a single approach. You can get all your money from investors. You can get all your money from other fund managers, or you can use a combination. When you use fundraisers, um, as you call them, does capital that- allocators. Uh, capital al allocators. Does that then put you in a bucket of having to do a 506C? Not necessarily. Uh, so uh, that's a good question. Uh, maybe all your invest, uh, uh, all your listeners are not familiar with 506 B and C. So let me quickly recap. Yes. Uh, there are two type of funds you can create. You can create either a 506 B fund, which can be open to 35 non-accredited investors, but the disadvantage of that fund is you cannot advertise. Or you can create a 506 C fund, which is open only to accredited investors. Um, I can talk about the definition of an accredited investor, but most people may already know you two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars for a family or two hundred thousand for individual. But you can advertise. That's the big advantage. So when you come to us, we'll either create a five hundred six B fund or a five hundred six C fund, and some people create both funds. 
And so the, uh, absolutely you can bring other uh, non-accredited investors in a 506B fund too, but you cannot advertise. It has to be your friends and family, people you have already have an existing relationship with. So. so you didn't answer my question directly. Okay, which was, try, try me again. Can these fund allocators, can they raise money for a 506B? If their fund is a 506, uh, if they have a 506B fund, they can raise money for a 506B. Mm -hmm. If they have a 506C, automatically they can raise money from a 506B, but they cannot advertise the deal. They can advertise the fund, but they cannot advertise the deal. So okay. the allocators can create either a B or a C fund. Most people create a C fund, but they absolutely can create a B fund and invest in 506B deals. The short answer to your question is yes. Allocators can raise money for 506B deals. And in fact, we have several allocators and very large sponsors who have built relationships with our fund managers and they, all their deals are 506B deals. So That's what I was going to say is like, once you do your first deal, that you've already built that relationship. Exactly. Exactly. And so now they can go to them and be like, hey, I got this deal. You should invest in it. And so then they can put that money through a fund allocator into a 506B. And I and if I was the GP on that, I don't have to have a direct relationship with the, where the money's coming from, just exactly. the, the fund the fund allocator. Exactly. So is that the distinction then is to have a relationship with the fund allocator first? Is that where if they were going to try yes. to break down the this chain? sponsor has to build a relationship with the fund allocator, not necessarily the investor, just the fund allocator. Mm -hmm. okay. And then uh, they can uh, uh, invest in that. So correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. That a light bulb. Sure. So that's another one of those blind spots that I didn't know about, which I think could be very powerful because when people are first starting out in this syndication world, they're almost always going to start out in with the friends, fund, and family, right? friends and family with a 506B yeah. because they don't have a track record yet. And all they have is their past relationship with this person to get them to actually write that check. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. There's so many cool strategies here and which is why I think like this mastermind that you have in the community and the ability for people to ask strategy questions can be so powerful because you guys have been there and done it and you know what doesn't work you know what can catch people up and, and cause delays or um, can it cost more money and so through your experience through yourself and the people in your community you're going to be saving people a lot of time and money absolutely you hit the nail right on the head uh, Benson so um, people come, th there are regular community introductions, fund managers introduce themselves. There is so much interaction on our Slack channel. We have launched over 200 funds and we have a wide range of asset classes. We didn't get into that. So let me briefly talk about that. Each asset class is very interesting. You may not want to invest in the asset class, but sometimes you learn lessons from, okay, what worked in that asset class, which you can apply in another asset class. We have funds investing in multifamily, uh, retail, hotels, hospitality, self-storage. We have, uh, uh, you know, student housing, senior living, everything you can think of in real estate. We have oil and gas funds, and we have funds investing. We have a couple of doctors. They understand the business of me medical practices. They have run med several medical practices, and they have started a fund who basically invests in medical practices along with the real estate. Um, I'll tell you, that's a fantastic idea because you have the stability of the real estate layered on top of the benefits of a business running on top of it. And then we have some funds who have invested in judgment liens, which are which is so interesting. Sometimes you get a lien on, you know, somebody, you sue somebody, you get a lien on it, and then you collect uh, the lien for pennies on the dollar. They've invested a fund for judgment liens. So what I'm trying to do is give you a somewhat long-winded answer to your question. When you come to these masterminds, you meet people and fund managers from a wide range of disciplines and asset classes. And we actually have asset class education as well. Hey, you want to learn more about multifamily or you want to learn more about self-storage? We invite some of our more experienced fund managers to talk about the asset class. So it's just been an amazing community and people really do appreciate it. So, I love it. And I know we're here to talk about real estate but we both sure. come from the the startup world. Are are any of these funds set up to fund startups as well? Absolutely, that's one of the asset classes I didn't mention. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, a different one more doctor and his business friend 
he's a well-known orthopedician. He has access to uh, a wide range of medical startups and he knows how to evaluate the medical startup because he is orthopedic. Right. These are all related to orthopedics. And they have started a fund where you can invest in these startups. And uh, instead of getting a separate K-1 and investing, mul getting multiple tax documents, they can almost get the stock brokerage type of experience, right? Okay, I put $100,000 in this fund, I'll put 20,000 in this startup, 10,000 in this startup. So the short answer to your question is absolutely, we have more than one fund which is investing in startups. So. That's very cool. So what what problems do you think, so someone's getting started in this space, right? And what do you think the most common problems are that they're going to face and, and how can Avestor help them? So what do you need in a business? You need something to sell. You need something to for somebody to buy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's distill it down to the essence. You don't need a Harvard MBA for that. So in real estate, what is it that you're selling? You're selling either a deal which you are controlling. I mean, you, I know you're thinking of maybe getting into multifamily, but initially, but maybe you invest in somebody else's deal. And then you're what, what, what do you need? You need people to invest in that deal. I know you have friends and family, but you want to build a business. You want to go beyond that. The beauty of our investor is we help you with all of that. We go, let's find something for you to sell. Now, you can come with your own deal. You can come talk to our 300 fund managers who have their own deals. But on top of that, we actually negotiate with top tier sponsors, preferred terms in every asset class, self-storage, retail, hospitality, hotels, uh, multifamily. What do I mean by that? You know, it's no secret in the industry, if you raise $2 million for a uh, person, you get a better deal than if you raise 100,000, right? It's not That's not rocket science. So what we negotiate is almost like collective bargaining, almost like the Costco model, where we negotiate on behalf of all the fund managers what, what do I mean by that? Let's say it's a multifamily deal and for $2 million, you get a 90-10 split or an 85-15 split. We say you cannot apply that to each individual manager. You have to give us the collective terms. So if four fund managers, let's say, raise half a million each, that's 2 million. So you have to give us the 90-10 terms. So that makes it very easy to get very, very preferred terms to top quality deals because they're getting the collective terms. That's what, half of the equation, right? So to answer your question, you need something to sell and we'll help you find something to sell. You can bring your own deals or you can work with other fund managers. How do we help you with the investors? I think I answered that question a little bit, but let me build on that. Mm -hmm. We have a marketplace. Investors may come in, but don't depend on, on that completely. You can present your deal to other fund managers, just like I said, the other side of the coin, and they can bring their investors to the table. On top of that, we give you some marketing templates. We give you a free copy of Go High Level CRM. We give you website templates. We give you marketing emails, which you can modify if you want. Or we also work with a variety of marketing agencies who give highly discounted rates for you to build a custom website, a custom lead magnet. So we are the highly motivated to help you scale because we are we charge based on the AUM we manage. So we want to help you succeed, not only finding the deals, but also finding investors. So, Got it. So let's say somebody is starting out. They don't have a, a wide network mm -hmm. of friends and family who could invest in deals. They're just not liquid, liquid enough, right? They, don't, they haven't built those relationships yet. How does someone like that get started? Um, to start building those relationships so that once they have a deal, they can more easily get their newly found friends and family into those deals. So the way it's always a chicken and egg kind of a situation, the, the very first thing is we help you stay compliant. Capital raising is a highly, highly regulated industry. SEC can crack down upon you. So we do the Reg D filings for you. And so with this customizable fund, the beauty is now you can pitch any deal within that fund. Otherwise, you would have to have a separate Reg D filing for every deal you're pitching. So what we can do is we can help you find those deals and then we populate it in the platform. And then you can send it out to friends and family and say, hey, these are the type of deals I'm investing in. And there's no downside to it. You can very easily create a deal 
pitch a deal, and if it doesn't work, you delete it. You cannot do that with syndications, right? And so that's kind of how we help you break the chicken and egg. So mm. we find you some deals, and I highly encourage you not to do your own deals initially, raise money for others as an LP, fund of funds LP. Remember, you are making money too. You're getting that 85-15 split and taking 15-20% and passing the rest to the investors. So right. And and for everybody that's listening, you you talked about splits a couple of times. That the split is the difference between what portion of the fund the GPs own versus what the LPs own. Uh, not so much what they own, what the, how the money is split. The when you get distributions, split. let's say you get uh, you pay after expenses, you get ten thousand uh, dollars. So when we say it's a eighty twenty split, eighty percent goes to the LP and twenty percent goes to the GP who is running the deal. But there is an important distinction that eighty percent. When I'm referring to, if you create your own fund and raising money for others, that eighty percent goes to you as the fund manager. And you can decide how much you are going to give your investors. So out of that $80, for let's say it's $100, $20 goes to the sponsor who's doing the deal. $80 comes to you as the fund manager who's investing as an LP. And in that $80, maybe $60 goes to the investors and $20 goes to you. And that's how you make money as a fund of funds manager. So, mm, As a fund of funds. So these people that are coming in as fundraisers, into Avestor, they have to set up a fund to participate. They can't just go and start selling deals on the platform. No, it's a highly regulated industry. Uh, that's right. a quick way of, no, none of us look good in orange, yeah? So so they set up uh, a fund of fund An or this customizable fund. With customizable you. fund of funds. It's so they can do that, it can go on forever, so. Okay, very interesting. So, as far as like how this came to be, so you, you guys were doing traditional sort of syndications in the past, or you had been part of them from maybe a GP and an LP perspective, and you thought, okay, we want to solve these problems. Did you start off thinking, okay, this is just going to be a technology solution to start? No, we always you, wanted to solve the problem. Forward? Yeah, we always wanted to solve the problem from an LP perspective. And because we wanted to bring, I've said this before, the ease of stock brokerage investing to alternative investing. Right. And once we did that, uh, we realized that there's only so much you can grow our own fund. We have our own fund, which we built to test out the platform, quote unquote. And we, we have invested in more than 50 deals with pretty good returns. So we know how to evaluate deals. But then other fund managers came and said, what you have built is absolutely phenomenal for the investor perspective. Why don't you let us create our fund? And we realized that's a much better way to uh, scale because instead of one fund getting 300 investors, how about 200 funds getting 100 investors each? So you'll you'll scale much faster. So, Yeah. So what's next for Avestor? Is there new features, new functionality coming out that will you know, change the industry even further? Or is what we see basically what the platform is and it's just about getting more people in it? Uh, no, we have a very, very rich development team, more than a 15, 20% development team. Uh, sometimes we had contractors and uh, we have a roadmap which extends into multiple years. So uh, we, we want to become an ecosystem where people can come in and the fund the deal by themselves. So that's the beauty of Avestor. It's And so we'll, we'll, we'll have this internal tools which will allow fund managers to communicate, uh, and we are adding more and more calculators, which will tell you how to allocate expenses, how you make money in different deals. So uh, it by no means is the development complete. Uh, we are constantly adding, sometimes we have three mini releases in a week, you know? So oh, we wow. have a very, very agile development team and we get a lot of feedback from fund managers and we are super responsive in how soon we implement them and adding new features. So do you have any sort of features that helps fund managers analyze deals? Not in the platform, but we have calculators because we built our own fund uh, deal analyzer. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we'll probably eventually migrate that into the platform, but we have separate standalone Excel sheets, which will help you analyze deals. Yeah. So. Very cool. What's your perspective on uh, fractional ownership on the blockchain and do you think that how that's how is that going to change how a investor does business when and if people start raising money and doing syndications with uh, with crypto? You know, 
Blockchain use has been uh, greatly exaggerated. And we have built the technology in a way where we built it on our own proprietary technology, but we can very easily plug in blockchain underneath it. To me, blockchain will only take off when there is a lot of secondary marketplaces where people can buy and sell. So effectively, you're getting the benefits of blockchain using our customizable fund fractional ownership anyway. What you're not getting is the ability to buy and sell, but those marketplaces will take a while to evolve. And if and when it evolves, we can easily slip in blockchain underneath our technology if we need. So we have designed the technology in such a way. So, so you forward thinking about, okay, that will potentially be something we need to think about in the future. Let's build it anticipating that that's exactly it doesn't support it now but the architecture is in a way that can be layered underneath so got it okay um so oh two over 200 funds you guys have established so far fairly new company a couple years uh you know the company is more than four or five years old but remember mm -hmm. we started with creating our own fund and it took a while uh, to build out the platform we mm -hmm. opened it to other fund managers less than three years back. So really, you can say that's when the company really started, when we opened it to other fund right. managers. Less than three years, and we are doubling at least each year. We hope to more than do more than that next year. So mm -hmm. That's great. So so who are you looking for right now? Um, you know, We've got this platform here, and people are listening to the podcast, and they, they have some interest in what's going on here. Who really should look into Avest or more? Um, Great question. The, the answer is multifold. Mm -hmm. Our segments are as follows. We have sponsors who want a more efficient way of doing syndication deals, right? Instead of creating a separate PPM, separate blue sky filings. When I say sponsors, these are people who are buying a multifamily property or who are doing a re assistant a residential living or a senior living, whatever it is, right? That's segment number one. Segment number two is capital allocators. Capital allocators are people who want to raise money for deals. They don't want to run the deals themselves. And, um, but uh, they may they know how to analyze deals. Their friends and family may want to say, hey, I like the way you're doing money. Can I get onto it? So they want to build out these funds. Segment number three is co-GPs, who are people who don't do their own deals, but they want to partner with people who are doing their deals and take on some of the responsibilities. Segment number four is debt originators. So if we have several funds who actually do loan originations, so they give money to fix and flippers. Maybe they charge 12% and give 10% to their investors and charge loan origination fees. And then there are multiple other segments we are going after. People who want to invest in startups and who want to create a venture, a customizable venture fund, people who do fix and flips, Think about it. You have done fix and flips. There is no way you can do a syndication for a fix and flip. Uh, if all you're raising is $300,000 and you're paying $25,000 to an attorney, the only person who's getting rich is the attorney. Yeah. Whereas here with a customizable fund, even if you're raising $100,000, you can put that in a deal because you're building that empty foundation and then you can populate it with any number of deals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so another market we are going after is RIAs. If you're a registered investment advisor, and you want to offer alternative investments to your fund, uh, to your investors, you can do that. Uh, I know I can go on, but one last market I want to point out is realtors. If you're a realtor, how often do you sell a house to somebody? I mean, nobody buys a house every few months. Maybe some do, but very few. Right. But whereas a realtor has this entire clientele who might be looking for a, a rental property, but they can't buy a rental property every three months or six months, but they would be happy to buy a $50,000 slice or a $25,000 chunk. So we have a couple of realtors who are creating a platform exactly like that, a fund in our platform, where they're selling fractional ownership of single family houses, saying, hey, we'll go to this rapidly appreciating area, we'll buy a bucket of five houses, you get diversification, and then uh, we'll sell it in five years and do a 70-30 or 80-20 or whatever split it is. So those are the type of people. But to really summarize, if you are looking to raise capital for any type of endeavor, more than once, if all you're doing is one deal and you're done, then a fund doesn't make sense. But if you think you'll do one or two deals a year, a customizable fund not only is a better way to do it, a better exp investor experience, but you're actually saving money than doing one individual syndication at a time. So 
long answer to your question, but hopefully that uh, clarifies me. Long but complete, right? Thank that you. Was, that's the key. Um, amazing, very cool. I'm, I'm excited to see how the platform goes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm digging in more, and you know, we'll talk more off board about you know using, you know, uh, how to get set up. Uh, but anybody, sure. if you're if you're looking at at you know either raising money or you're looking to invest or all of the different buckets um, that Badri just talked about, go check out Avestor. Uh, what's the what's the website? It's avestor.com, A-V-E-S-T-O-R.com, which will go to avestorinc.com, but it's the simplest way to remember is avestor.com. Uh, 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 like invest, but avest, avestor.com, yeah? So, Got it. And I am happy to talk to anybody. So uh, my email is badri at avestorinc.com, B-A-D-R-I at avestorinc.com. And uh, even if you're not interested in creating a fund, if you just want to reach out, chat about something, please do reach out. I'm happy to chat. So Amazing. And you can find me in LinkedIn as well, Badri Malinor. Yeah. So M-A-L-Y-N-U-R. Got it. Well, we'll put all your info in the show notes as well so people can just click through. Uh, but Badri, thank you so much for taking the time. Really enjoyed the conversation and learning more about Avastor and also just kind of educating people on the syndication and fundraising world. So thank you very much for taking the time. Uh, thank you, Benson. I appreciate it. And uh, hey, look forward to having you be part of the Avestor family. Uh, I, you have a very interesting background. Uh, if you ever want to go beyond just a single family fix and flip and you want to uh, get into some other asset classes, uh, I think you should definitely consider a customized book fund. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you for everybody for listening to this edition of the REI Hacker Podcast. Keep an eye out for more amazing guests like Baudry in the future. We talk about real estate investing, entrepreneurship, business development, and anything exciting where you can make money. So keep an eye out for those, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care. That's a wrap on today's Real Estate Revelations. Thank you for tuning into the REI Hacker Podcast. Remember, every property has a story, and every deal is a lesson. Until next time, keep hacking the real estate world.